These items are the most or some of the most useful consumable items in RuneScape 3. I have covered quite a lot of videos recently talking about low level items, middle level items and high level items and then even items that you just shouldn't buy because they're a waste of money. So now we're moving on to the consumables. Is there anything that you think I've missed in this video? If there is, leave it in the comments. Of course, I can't include everything because then the video would be super long. If there's enough, I'll make a part two and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about the most useful consumable items in RuneScape 3. So, item number one is going to be something that I wish I knew about a lot sooner, and it's going to be the Charming Potion. Now, if you didn't know what the Charming Potion is, well, let me show you. So, on the GE, you can buy this from here. They are, let's actually see. What we'll do is we'll buy most of the stuff so you can see exactly how much they are right now. 4.8k that bought for. Now, this is, this is super awesome because if you are gathering up charms for summoning, this will increase the base drop rate of charms from combat collecting charms by one every time which means if you go to water fiends and you're getting one red charm from killing a water fiend you're getting two this is insane it saves so much time and i didn't even know this was a thing until i was leveling up my alt account get charming potions one dose lasts six minutes it's 4.8k and it's gonna save you a hell of a lot of time don't, don't play without these anymore if you're doing summoning if you're if you're getting charms in any way drink one of these bad boys Number two, we have to go to the GE for because obviously the max skill GE is just not cool enough these days. Anyway, number two, we're actually just going to talk about PVM supplies in general, the ones that people tend to miss out on. Obviously, consumables like food and stuff is going to be number one, but everybody buys food. But we're going to go to my bank for this one, actually. This makes more sense. Things like incense sticks for your spirit weed, your lantadime, your quorum incense sticks, your freaking weapon poisons, your anti-poisons, all this sort of stuff. Vulnerability bombs. Where are they at? Let me search this. I've got some. I better have some vulnerability bombs. We have a lot of vulnerability bombs. Use them. They are so freaking important. You have to take advantage of these. And if you don't, you're missing out on a ton of DPS. The amount of times people come to me and they go, hey, and it, I'm, I'm just my DPS just doesn't seem to be quite as good. I'm doing everything that uh, all the videos say and all this sort of stuff. And then I will say, hey, look, are you using vuln bombs? And they go, no, I don't, it doesn't seem really worth it. I can't afford it. You can. You can freaking afford it. They're worth it. And the same goes for things like weapon poison as well. They'll say, ah, oh, yeah, I don't really use weapon poison uh, and and i'm like what do you what do you mean this it's it's so cheap that's actually buy i'm going to show you right now I'm going to buy a weapon poison right the second we're going to scroll right down to the bottom we're going to buy a weapon poison plus 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 whatever the freaking best most pluses is by it costs us 44k now you might think 44k for a potion bro that's insane that's a lot but necromancer piss off <laughs> we are gonna use the apply we apply this 12 minutes we get an in we get an increase to our weapon poison damage you want to use these super important i will link lots of stuff down in the description there's probably gonna be more but i'll link them in the description i'm not gonna cover this one much longer because this can take it could take ages pvm supplies that increase your dps with very little effort they'll be linked below Moving on from the PVM supplies back to some more skilling style stuff is going to be pulse cores. Now, of course, you can't just go and buy these, but you can get them with oddments. If you come to your uh, little currency pouch and go to your oddments, you can then open the store up and you can buy the uh, the pulse cores here. Now, these have more use than just the specific like bonus XP. Obviously, they give you a lot of bonus experience, and I use these every time I do anything that I freaking hate doing in the game, like archaeology, for example, because it's going to save me some time. But something that is incredibly useful about these, and the reason they're number three on this list, it's not in any order, but the reason they're on this list is the boost that you can get from them. So if I press examine, I'm going to assume it's going to tell me here. Yeah, here you go. So once consumed, it will explode, granting an XP boost up to plane and a random buff to you and nearby players. Now, the random buff is going to be any sort of, I'll put it on screen for you in editing, um, but it can be any sort of buff to your, your skills here. The Pulse Core is the easiest way to boost to make overloads if you don't have that, to boost in archaeology, to do like mysteries that you can't do, and many other things in the game. If you need to boost anything, and it's like like seven, I believe it's like six or seven, then Pulse Cores are the way to do it. So the best way to get act, like one of these activities is the Columbus Training Camp when it's like busy. Double XP, for example, would be really good. I'll probably fall for Inthy, right? You get fall for Inthy, you go in a busy world, and you just stand around all the players that are skilling. People are going to be firing these off all the time, and all you need to do is just be around when it fires. And Necromancer, please. Let's see how many times this happens. I swear to God, during this video, let's see how many. It's, it's, anyway, <laughs> yeah, if you send around all the players that are skilling, you'll get the, the boost from it. You can wait until you get that one. You can go do what you want to do. Pulse calls, insanely good. The next one we're going to talk about is incense sticks. Now, just all incense sticks 
in fact. It, there's not really any specific ones that are better than others. I mean, there is, but it depends on what you're doing in the game. But what I'm going to use as an example is the Torsal Incense Sticks. And these, once you burn them and you like overload them and stuff, will give you a, just a flat 2% increase to XP gain. So if you have GP and you just want to save time, then you can use these and get a flat 2% XP increase always, no matter what. You can keep it going, right? It is definitely worth it for a lot of people. I'll use this for Necromancy, for example. But then you've got other ones as well. Let's have a look at the Taramin one here. You see this one, it says it will give a 25% chance to automatically bank ashes when burning logs in new fires. Sounds pretty useless to a lot of people, but ashes apparently are on the Jagex list of items for necromancy. And so this could be cool if you're trying to collect some of those or for an Iron Man for any instance, but there's so many different effects. I'll put them on screen for you now. There's, there's so many different effects. Just take a look through the list of incense sticks. And if there's any use for you, grab the ones you need and start using them because they're going to be time savers. They're going to be like just efficiency. They're going to be just, 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 just use them. They're worth it. They're hella useful. useful. Number five, we are going to talk about my archaeology preset, but specifically, I'm going to be talking about very specific familiars. Now, there's many familiars and they all offer, offer different things, but of course, you can just buy the pouches off the Grand Exchange and these will definitely count as consumables. But the ones that I'm going to give you the example of for me right now is while I'm doing archaeology, I'm taking advantage of the Water Fiend, which is going to help me get some more actual like, materials while doing archaeology, because that's what it does. If you switch this here, this inventory here will fill up with archaeology materials and chance of also the relics that I'm digging up to of doubling, which is a hell of a good time saver. Now, the other thing is I don't want to bank all the time. I've got a Grace of the Elves. Likely my inventory is going to fill up with relics before I use all my porters. And back when there was a Golden K buff, this definitely happened. To extend my trips, what I do is I go ahead and bring a yak as well. Once my inventory is full of relics, I kill off my water fiend, just like this. And then I summon a yak, and I use its special ability to bank that item. So, for example, if I use the familiar item here, and I can bank my super restore. I sent one into the bank there, which I would do with the damaged relics. There's no other way to teleport these to the bank. The portal won't work. Um, you, 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 just, you just use this. You just cast it loads of times, and then you mix it with whatever, the, the prism restoration, and you can just constantly cast this off until it's all empty. And then you kill off the yak, and you go back to the water fiend. But it's really important that if you're doing something in the game, that you check what familiar matches what you're doing this familiar for all skills mining thieving everything right just, just look it up see they'll give you little boosts and stuff and there's also other scenarios like this archaeology one where you can take advantage of different familiars and it makes your life a lot better next up is an item that i never use but should and it is really freaking useful and it's not just for, for pvm but it's also for skilling as well and that is going to be the ancient elven ritual shard this thing right here in fact i've got two in the bank for showing in videos i don't know i've got two but i'm going to buy another one right now to show you guys how much they cost assuming i can afford it okay so around about 6.8 mil apparently let's just buy this you must choose a quantity okay one buy one please there we go. Okay, so it bought for 7.1 million GP. Uh, so as you can see, this is pretty cheap and easy to obtain. What it's going to do is if you right click it and press activate, it will gradually restore your prayer points over time, like an enhanced, like an enhanced Excalibur does for your health, which is pretty damn awesome. It has a four minute cooldown, five minute cooldown, and it will just it will just gradually increase your prayer points over time. You see it's giving me the prayer renewal effect here. You'll see it every now and again going over my character. Um, this is super useful for when you're using things like the skilling prayers. Uh, these ones like light form and whatnot when you're doing skilling. And then of course in combat as well, if you want to save on prayer potions, if you want to like maybe get an extra inventory slot because of this, if you're going to like Zuck, it's good. Uh, long fights like the Arc Glacier at high, high end rages. It's definitely worth bringing this along because it can save you some money. You should probably, I should probably add this to my elite dungeon preset, to be honest. It'll probably save me like a restore flask every now and again, which adds up over time. But super convenient for skilling and for combat, and it's not that expensive. So grab yourself one of these. So while we head to the le least favorite GE of mine, which is the regular Prif one and not the Max Guild one, don't know why, it used to be my favorite, but whatever, it's not what the video is about. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about another thing in the Oddment store, and that is going to be a couple of things. We'll just talk about the Oddment store in general. We've got the, uh, where are they at? Silverhawk Feathers, which are now called Silverhawk Downs and look really weird. Uh, you can buy these, they're super useful for putting in your Silverhawk boots, and which you get for free, by the way, uh, and just getting free agility XP. It's Oddments for agility 
Silver TXB. They're definitely good consumables. You can also just buy regular Silver Hawk feathers off of the Grand Exchange as well. If we come here, Silver Hawk, you can buy the feathers here. And then they're not too expensive, right? It's good agility XP, definitely worth getting. The next thing, of course, in here on the oddments that I was going to mention was going to be the protein packs. Now, might not be worth 500 oddments. It'll depend on you and how many oddments you have and whether you value this or not. But if you want to AFK during double XP, buying these, you buy a pack here, you get the thing and you can open up and you get yourself, I believe, 75. Let's see. We'll open up this and we'll get ourselves some protein hides. We get ourselves 75 protein hides. As you can see, that's pretty damn good. That's not too bad. If I get 323 XP each and then it's on double XP too, uh, I'd say that's pretty worth it for a few oddments. So another consumable that is absolutely worth looking into. Next up, we're going to be talking about these lovely items in my inventory, which I am using a freaking ton of right now, especially for archaeology. These are the Sign of the Porters. Now, these are the Sign of the Porter 7s, but you can get, obviously, all of the other ones as well, which do just less per thing. Now, what these do is when you equip them, they will transport up to 50 items that you get through skilling. Specific ones, some don't work, like relics from archaeology, for example, but materials do. To the bank. Just goes directly to the bank. That's what it does. Now, you can pair this with the Grace of the Elves, so you can use this on the Grace of the Elves. Whoops, one second. And then it will consume those, and there you go. Now, the Grace of the Elves can have up to 500 of these charges super useful now the way you make these is through divination you can also get them by pickpocketing like elves and stuff but you can make them through divination at different levels the highest one the sevens is made with incandescent energy and then a dragon sun necklace so we'll make a few of these now and then we'll oops, that's not what i wanted to do not the divine charges okay cool okay three of these let's make the sound of the porters and as you can see we combine those together we make ourselves some more sound of the porters and then we can chuck those into our grace of the elves again just nice and easy like that not very expensive to make seeing as those dragonstone necklaces just bought for like 9k each i would say that's definitely worth it for 50 banking things you just sit it wherever you are thanks if you definitely worth grabbing if you don't use these get on it they are a massive time saver increases your xp per hour you want to get them Next up is going to be one of the most fun items in the game, and that is going to be the Acceleration Power Burst, or the Power Burst of Acceleration. Now, we're going to grab one of these, and this to buy it, so you can see that it costs 20,400 coins. I'd pay 500k for one of these, because, holy crap, they're just, they're just that good. But they're not, <laughs> but it's, it's fun. Anyway, point is, what these do is, if you, let me just exit the drainer here, when you drink this, you basically have no cooldown on your surge, your blade of dive or escape. Uh, you can just you can just go as crazy as you want for the duration, which is six seconds. So we're gonna come here where we've got lots of space, and we're just gonna go absolutely crazy. So we're gonna drink this, so we're gonna go surge, 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 dive, surge, dive, surge, all the way through until it runs out. And then of course, if you have double surge and stuff, you can keep going a little bit longer. So this is really stupidly useful in PVM for some situations. Uh, but also, if you're doing clues, I assume these will be useful too. Traveling to do quests, save you some time. You can surge around a hell of a lot. And yeah, definitely something worth keeping. I mean, they're just fun. Let's be honest. That's the best part. You can just you can just surge a lot. So happy about that. <laughs> anyway, for sake, man. Let's move to the next one. Okay, number 10 is going to be our last one. Let's go back to the regular good old GE to show you this one. Uh, but that's going to be Magic No Paper. So for those of you that are like, okay, I'm done, bye. Thank you for watching, appreciate it. Do like, do leave a sub, all that sort of stuff. Um, this was a different one. I've very, this has made this very different with this one. But anyway, Magic No Paper. For those of you that don't know, because there's some people, believe it or not, that don't know that you can decant potions at this guy over here. You don't, you can bring them noted as well, and you can you can decant them, just slip it in there, because people forget, and they, they trust me, you know to potions to this guy press the can does it for you okay just, just know that magic note paper if you didn't know this same thing when you're doing anything in the world that fills up your inventory loads if you're killing stuff like killing frost dragons or anything like that uh let me grab let me just grab some blubbers here and we'll get 10 of these you can use magic note paper which stacks and doesn't cost that much 448 coins you can use it on the item and boom it notes it for you so if you are out killing frost dragons or whatever and you don't have the death knot relic or let's say you let's say you're killing i don't know anything that drops something expensive that doesn't automatically know open your inventory bring this with you use it on it it just notes it up saves you the space you don't have to bank you can stay there for as long as you want and extend your trips it's just convenient like noting items in your inventory now there's no way to unnote it there's no unnote magic note paper i wish there was but there isn't but it just means that once you're done you come to the bank you put it all away so anything that's kind of like 
5k i guess even anything that's over the cost of this if it's worth noting it then just do it hell yeah saves you a lot of time if you didn't know what imagine open please let me know in the, in the comments i want to know <laughs> there's gonna be someone and then yeah and if you're not new and you didn't know there's gonna be, there's gonna be someone let me know please <laughs> anyway that's pretty much it for me today guys i hope you'll enjoy this is a very different video pretty tired uh feeling a bit i don't know weird i guess but it is what it is i hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like sub to the channel if you are new there's a pretty interesting video coming out tomorrow, Necromancy 1, just in case you didn't know. I playtested Necromancy, so if you want to see that, stick around for tomorrow. It'll be released tomorrow at about 3 o'clock-ish. But anyway, see you later, guys.